my coming. <laughs> yeah. It should be starting up right now. Here. I'll tell you right when... Uh, wait, wait, wait. It says receiving the content. It's just about to start. <laughs> Are you turning red? <laughs> okay, we're live. Hello, everybody. This is Edwin, the Magic Engineer, and my lovely wife, who has a Hello. YouTube channel of... No, we're good. Okay, we're not going to talk about that. No. We're not going to talk about that. No, we're not. Okay. So, um, welcome back, everybody, and uh, hopefully... Uh, this all should be live, and uh, I don't see the chat. Okay, let's pop out the chat window here to make sure that that's working. Top chat. Pop out chat. There we go. There we go. Okay, there we go. You don't see it yet on there? Mm-mm. Hello, everybody. We're all getting set up here, so... Welcome back to Edwin the Magic Engineer. And uh, I just did a quick test a few seconds ago, and so some people came in, but I was testing a couple things to make sure that I've got it all ready for everybody to see, and uh, things are gonna work the way I was hoping that they actually would work. Um, it's interesting, actually, because in YouTube, you used to have to run a video encoder, and then you actually, what's that? Sorry, it felt weird. Uh, you used to have to run a video encoder, and then um, you actually had to then go into YouTube and connect the two, but then YouTube changed it so you could actually just live stream just with YouTube just by itself. And so now I'm actually using a video encoder again so I can actually share my desktop back and forth. And I wanted to make sure that that was all working so you guys could see that. Okay, so who do we got coming in? I don't know, but this still, I still don't see it on mine. You're still not on? No. Okay. So while she's getting on, I see Jason here, Timothy uh, Vandenberg is in here. Michael Serta's in here, James Berge, and uh, let's see, Anthony Erickson's in there. My catcher, let's see, there we go. We got MTG Perp is in here now. Oh, great. Okay, <laughs> see, me. laugh out loud. Not only did you tell me the wrong day time, wrong day first time, but then you emailed me about it today and told me 5 p.m. EST. Oh, gosh. Huh. Did I say p.m. EST? Just go through me. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. Sorry, man. <laughs> Things have been so busy. Okay. So I need to give a public apology here because um, uh, Perp, or my catcher now, uh, he was actually going to come into my live stream and I was all excited to have him and I, I sent a message to him and said that I'd be doing this yesterday, but I actually meant to say today, but like I forgot to put that detail on. So he was on his channel and he told his, his people like, hey, let's go see Edwin. And then it was like, there's no Edwin. Edwin's a liar. So totally, I'm sorry, man, that was my fault. <laughs> okay, so I see we got Kevlar also, and Ninja Pips is in here. How's it going, Ninja? And is it FS Mora? I hope I'm saying that right. Now that I've gotten my apology, I can leave. Okay, well, thanks for <laughs> attending, Mike. It was good to have you here. Okay, James, oh yeah, Bergy, I know that one, definitely. Oh, Burge, oh, so it's Splurge. Oh, okay. Actually, I used to know a guy back in Chico, California, had a last name of Bergie, actually. So, sorry that I was mispronouncing that. Anyways, to the actual topic. So, we had a pretty interesting uh, Christmas around here in the Tracy house, and I've got some cool items to show you. And I wanted to bring my lovely assistant in, because not only did she actually pick up some really cool items for Christmas that are fairly inexpensive, and you guys might actually want to go out and grab some of them as well, but they were just, they were super creative. And so one of them, you see me wearing it right here. I got this nifty shirt on and then on the back, I don't know if we can see it. Eh, you see that? <laughs> <laughs> it actually says ETME. Now, not only did she do that and she actually made this shirt. So using the, 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 the cricket. cricket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then also Baker. I'll show you a couple other things that she did here. She also, made this nifty cup for me. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really nerding out on this thing, so that was all cricket. I tried this first because I wasn't sure I could do that, but... Uh-huh. Let's somehow. see. There's that. And then she actually made a cool cup for herself that she's actually using right now. So she had me go get a Starbucks cup that was actually at the Walmart, and then she cut out this uh, Tinkerbell piece here in the middle and like put that on as well. <laughs> Okay, so do you, can you describe to everybody like what that process is and like how you did that? Well, it's just an iron on. I just I I well, people probably know what the cricket is, but well, they, they actually these these are nerds oh. like me. They probably don't. 
<laughs> well, you just get an SVG file, you download it, and then you, um, the Cricut only talks to SVG files, and so I just, I found that one on Etsy, and I bought it, and then I put it into my Cricut, and then it cut it out, and I ironed it on, and then same with this. Except for this is a this is vinyl, and not iron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the Cricut is basically like a little three D printer, but it's it doesn't you know a three D printer leaves in stuff there, but the Cricut has like a little blade, and where it would normally be moving around its little inkjet, the Cricut literally just drags a blade across and just cuts whatever it is down below it. So you get like a big like sticker basically. And you cut out the shape, then peel it off, and then either iron it on, stick it on, whatever. So well, it depends on what if you use iron on or if you use like vinyl, which that is. Just yeah. Stick it on. Yeah. So I was really nerding out on those pieces. So um, then there's also a couple other pieces, and I don't know if everybody can they can kind of see right behind me. You see this box down here, guys? Okay. So this is a really cool box that you can actually pick these up on uh, Etsy. And they're Aussie UK appears to be the person who actually makes these. Yeah, they're in English. So let me first, like, this is why I actually set up OBS Studio so <laughs> I can do this. Let me click that over. Okay, so hopefully all of you are seeing that. Uh, let me know if you can. So what we've got here is this is an Etsy page. And um, right here, this is the person that's actually selling these handmade boxes where they actually, like, stitch in or burn in or cut in. Uh, it probably laser cut. I don't I know. It's laser how they actually cut the symbols in yes, there. Laser cut. And this is only like 28 bucks. So that's not like super expensive. That's a pretty cool little item there. So now <clears throat> what I actually did with mine and actually I'm really proud of it. So um, my old school cards are all contained in just a few spots, just four spots. I'll grab all these because you guys know that I have all those drawers over on the side that has like my whole collection and there's like just a ton of drawers, right? But old school is not a lot of cards. And so I thinned it down to actually just like my, just the main cards that I was probably gonna play in old school. And so firstly, I've got my main deck that's inside of this box. <clears throat> and this one was made, I already showed this on my first live stream. This was uh, made of tiger wood, no zebra wood. This was zebra wood, but this one was made out of. And uh, that's where I keep my main deck. And then inside of a binder, I've got just the most expensive cards that I own. So stuff like, you know, dual lands, fetch lands, other important stuff, you know, beta cards, just anything that's like inexpensive pretty much goes in here. And then <clears throat> um, all the old school cards that I deem to be like kind of deck worthy that are probably going to be put into decks and have some value gotten put inside here. And so this thing actually came with the wood separators, and so they're all... Like it's an option. You can... Oh, I did. It was. Yeah, yeah you can add It was an them. option. The... <laughs> it's like a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you can add the dividers. Not... I don't think you can pick the wood on this. I'm looking at the thing over there. Okay, it I just doesn't let you do that. I could pick the smaller box or the larger one. I think uh, that's... I don't know what size that one was. I so it's got a nice one. hinge and stuff like that on it. seems to be sturdy enough. It got to me really fast. Yeah, and these, these are like little wood dividers that they're all kind of like antique looking, you know, when they set them up. So this has got like all my old school cards that I consider to be uh, play worthy that are not currently in decks. And then the last box, you guys I think have seen this before. This is the Velcro one that I actually keep my actual decks in. And then also um, my bag of like life counters and play mats and stuff like that. So between that, that's like the majority of my old school cards. And so now kind of all of them are like in one spot. So um, I think that's really cool because there's like so many cards in all those drawers on the side and my entire collection is built around being able to actually like build decks and stuff like that. So I just love this little setup because they're all like in like one spot. So um, let me actually cruise on to the next piece here that I think was really cool that she actually set up. So first of all, I'll just show you. So I don't know if you guys can see this. That is a life counter that was also made by someone on Etsy. Now the coolest thing happens when you turn the, the life counter here, all the little mana symbols inside there, they all turn because they're all geared basically. And you can see there's like a fireball and there's a tree there and like a water drop. So it's like all the mana symbols. You and, can pick the wood too. Well, for this one, you mm -hmm. can pick the wood? Yeah. You can and it kind of has one, that burn think, wood smell. I think that one was cherry or something. I can't remember. It smells good though. Yeah. 
It's really <laughs> cool. Okay, so let me show you guys uh, this one, where that comes from. So that was also on Etsy, and here's the actual page. So this one was not super expensive. It's just a simple little like life counter, and it's got the little wooden gears and stuff like that. So it's called Magic the Gathering Life Counter with Moving Gears. I, you know, amazingly creative description there. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> but I thought that that was really cool. So when I have this little zebra wood deck box, it just kind <clears> of <throat> sits right there at the top. And so that was uh, the next piece that she got. I was like so impressed with all these. Okay, so now, um, let me know if there's any questions coming in that I need um, to pay attention to. They want to know <clears> if you're going to put the link at the bottom. Oh yeah, I could do, af after I post this video, I can't really edit like the video content very well. YouTube <laughs> allows that, but their interface is really buggy so far. So, but what I can do is I can easily edit like the details and I can add links to all these pieces inside of it. So I'll definitely do that. So then the next one she got, and I don't know how you found this stuff, but anyways. <laughs> I just looked on Etsy and put Magic the Gathering and I, I was like, oh, this looks cool. I don't think he has this. Uh -huh. Kind of up from there. So here's like a, it's a little baggie with counters in them, and I guess Citadel Black is like the name. But let me show you these. Let me get a couple of them out. So they're all metal, and what you've got is you've got like a little plus one plus one counter on one side, and you flip it over, and you got a minus one minus one. I guess I have to go like this. Minus one minus one counter on that side, and so there's several of them that come inside the package. And they're all really cool little metal ones. Let's see if I can try to get these in a good shot so everyone can actually see it. These are really cool little items. I'm really digging these. And I love how they're just metal and solid. Okay, so now let me show you where those ones actually came from. I'll flip the camera over here. Okay, so here we go. Set of 20 MTG metal buff counters. Plus one, plus one, and minus one, minus one. So um, I'll have a link for these also below. But... Let me tell you why I think they're so awesome, why I'm so excited about it. <laughs> okay, so you guys, if you've watched any of my other channels, you know that my favorite deck is my Vintage Gift Slaver deck. And the Mind Slaver lock is the main thing that you're going for, but um, the main way that I kill is normally either with the Platinum Angel or a very cool creature called the Trisculibus. Let me go find him. There he is, right there on the top. Okay, the Trisculibus. Now, what this guy does is kind of like the, tri old, the tr Triskelion and the Penibus both kind of combined together. He actually is a creature that is a 7 casting cost 4-4 four, four creature. And when he comes out, you can actually pay a mana and you can remove a 1-1 one, one counter off of him because he comes in with 3 one, 1 counters. You can remove a 1-1 one, one counter on, off of him and that's a 1-1 one, one flying creature. So that's where it's kind of like the Penibus. But then you can sacrifice that little creature and do a point of damage to something. Now that's where these things are kind of perfect because they're like these little like metal plus one, plus one counters. And so you put three of them on this guy and it's gray and he's gray and they look like a little birdie. So it's kind of like the little flying artifacts. And I like how they clink together and they look like trinkets and he's an artifact, so he's a trinket, right? And so they start out with plus one, plus one and then you move them off and you can throw them at someone's face and do damage. Yay. <laughs> so I just, I don't know, I thought that was the coolest thing. So You had to show me this whole setup like at yeah. Starbucks yesterday. Yeah, I got all excited and I was like, you have to see how cool this is. And she was like, oh, just accept your toy. <laughs> <laughs> just, just accept it. I'm just glad you're happy, but I thought, oh, I don't know about, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't sure if you had those. I can't remember. So yeah, I guess those are most of like the, the really cool magic things. Oh, I guess there's also the play mat. Um, see if I can move this over for a second. I'm gonna risk it. We're gonna move the camera. You guys see that Black Lotus play mat that's sitting there? She also got me that, so that wasn't terribly expensive. Let's see. Where you got a good shot of my Disney leggings. Woo. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> got some leggings. Those are not fold. jammies, those are leggings. <laughs> yeah, they're actual leggings. <laughs> So anyways, I thought you guys would probably enjoy that stuff because it's not super expensive stuff, but it's really cool little items. And I just, I love the handmade wood kind of like boxes and containers and like little metal life counters and stuff like that. Like I've showed you guys in other pictures of those metal dice that I've got. I just think those are so cool. I love like the weight of them, right? So anyways, those are those things. So I've got other topics to, mo hey, look at that. What? <laughs> 
a bidding war oh. for my catcher's love from Robert <laughs> <Hawaii>. Starbucks. <laughs> Mike, are you still here? <laughs> are you going to put up with that? <laughs> Edwin is the proxy for my love today. Okay, there we go. So, okay, Mike, so if you ever come to Orlando, then all this money will come back at you. I'll get you a lunch or something like that. We'll, we'll go out and have some fun. Well, we'll do something like that. <laughs> So um, I've got a couple other topics, but uh, hopefully some of you guys have seen the video that I just posted earlier today about the arcade one-up boxes. Uh, did any of you see that? Are any of you excited about that topic? If so, I'd love to get some questions below on that. And I posted a video yesterday about like, you know, financial predictions and like how I'm going to be in general, like avoiding those for Magic the Gathering. And I've been going back and forth with people answering questions and talking with them on the comments about like why I'm deciding to go that direction and if it's good or bad or anything like that. So um, yeah, if you guys have some comments about that, I'd love to hear your feedback on like that bit as well. Kurt just said something very nice to you. I said, right there. of course, I will encourage my friends supporting my other friends. I am not greedy. You create great videos and you deserve support, my man. Thank you, Mike. That was really awesome of you to say. So I feel the same way about you, man. I'm really glad to hear that you're back at Magic the Gathering. I kind of figured you would be, but I was really hoping that that's where you're at because it's such a fun game. It's such a fun community. And like I think you're in a similar spot to where I've been where it's like the negativity just gets you down sometimes. And it just kind of puts you in a spot where you're just like... I don't know if I can keep doing this, you know, like I was, I've been arguing with all like the trolls on uh, a lot of my videos and I just get really sick of it, honestly. And it makes you just not feel like doing it anymore. And when you're doing it all as a hobby, I'm not getting paid for this. And I'm just looking around, like I'm doing this for fun and I'm just pissed off. <laughs> so why <laughs> am I doing this? Ignore the troll people. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. They, they want attention. Yeah. I need to just ignore the trolls. That's for sure. Um, you have a question. Yeah. Yeah. RD Baron 102 says, "Do you did you use a ribbon under your cards in the wooden box to get the cards out easier? Did you play Pac-Man Plus yet?" Okay, so a ribbon under the cards would be a really good idea. I have not maybe done that yet. In the big one, maybe? Oh, in the big box? Oh, maybe not. I, I figured you probably meant this. I've just actually been holding it upside down and <clears throat> making it throw up every time. So a ribbon would be a really good idea. Like maybe I could attach that at the top and then have it kind of hang out the front or something, or kind of fold it over the cards and grab it and pull it up. That's a really good idea, actually. I like that quite a bit. So, yeah, I might um, have to do that. James. And we had a oh, second sorry. Oh, sorry, question. Sorry. Uh, oh, it's Pac-Man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Not only have we been playing Pac-Man, but the Pac-Man machine actually records your, your top score and keeps it on the machine. And so I've been placing a few scores up there and challenging someone special to try and go beat them. <laughs> You know, it's funny, actually, we do this thing. The <laughs> Pac-Man yeah, Pac machine is actually Holly's because yeah. she, she actually wanted it like as much as I wanted like the other three. And of course I wanted Pac-Man too. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be dishonest and lie about that. I wanted it too, <laughs> but, um, but it, she was really excited about the Pac-Man machine. So sometimes when I go over to the arcade and I turn on one of the games, and I'm sitting there playing it when I'm trying to get her to come in with me, I'll lean over and turn on the Pac-Man and start it. And it does the boop, 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 boop. And then she's like, ugh. It's, she, it's Holly Bait. <laughs> yeah, she just comes walking in like, why did you do that? I can't let Pac-Man sit there and die. <laughs> so she comes in very begrudgingly from the other room, grumbles at me, and starts playing Pac-Man. And well, she's cursing my name. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we, we definitely play the Pac-Man. It's a lot of fun. But I for sure put the most time into the Street Fighter machine because Street Fighter is awesome. I could spend just hours playing that game okay uh james did you say berg is that how you say it uh burge burge okay are the arcade games durable i saw the pac-man one in local walmart and knob was broken and particle board was broken okay so that's a really good question and the straight up answer is that like no they are not built with like really good <clears throat> solid walnut construction and really high-end joysticks they probably could have built them with higher end materials. Um, with all the shipping and packaging and everything, the, like those machines are between 250 to 300. They would not have been that price if they built them with that kind of quality. They would have been probably closer to five to $600. And whether or not that would be worth it would be very questionable. What I can definitely tell you guys is, even though it is particle board, yes, and like the controls and stuff are not super high end, they definitely work. 
and they definitely don't feel terrible. And I've been playing them for a while and I've been really enjoying them. So I don't have any regrets with buying them as they are. And for the few issues that I've actually had, I called up Arcade One Up on the phone and I was amazed at how willing to work with me they were. They just like sent me out that replacement marquee for the Rampage box because one was upside down. And they sent that clear plexiglass panel for Street Fighter, like all no charge. And I'm gonna call them again here in another couple days and get the plexiglass covers for the other three games and then try to see if I can get either a ROM update or an updated computer board for the gauntlet machine so um, I can actually go like up, up in the levels. But it's important to realize that these guys are very new. They just, I think, demoed these boxes at CES like, uh, like eight months ago or something. I don't know the exact number. Like whenever CES was, they demonstrated these. Everybody got really excited about it, and they're just cranking them out as fast as they can, and so they know that there's issues. And I see them actively working with people, and they're actively changing the boxes and updating them as they go. So um, I don't think there's any special uh, benefit to being an early adopter in this case, because we're talking about technology. As long as the company stays in business, I'd say like in the next like year, they're probably going to like work through a lot of these kinks and be really solid, but I've got no regrets for the boxes that I've bought. They are super fun. And I'm, I'm actually kind of looking forward to going out and eventually like upgrading little bits here and there, like a really high end joystick and stuff like that. That's like, that just feels perfect and works exactly correct. Mm -hmm. James also said, Ed, skip those guys. You know the truth about who and what you are. Don't listen to the negativity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I should talk about that a bit. So <laughs> Um, that's, I found that to be really hard. And the reason is that like, I actually care about the community. I actually care about every one of you that's in this live stream and what you guys think. And that's, you might notice I make a huge attempt to reply to everyone's comment, to actually answer every email that I get. And uh, I'm, of course there's some that I miss, but my track record so far is pretty good because I feel like if you guys are going to honor me with your time, I should be honoring you back with, with my time. And of course that ratio might not keep up forever if this channel keeps growing, but I really want to like do that for people because I care about the community. But the fact is that if I care about the community, then when people come in and they just get mean and spiteful and just take shots, it just gets under my skin. And my wife and I talk about this all the time and she's constantly giving me the same feedback. Like, why are you answering those guys? Like, why are you talking to them? And I'll tell you the one, <clears throat> the one that bothers me the most and I know this is my issue and I have to get past this somehow. I'm totally okay with people saying I'm wrong. I'm totally okay with people saying like I have a stupid opinion or you're an idiot or Edwin, you're ugly. I can handle that, I'm, <laughs> no problem, I'm fine. When people call me a dishonest person or they call me a liar or a manipulator, that's what gets under my skin. Mm -hmm. Because like, it's a very different thing to insult someone's character. Like anyone can do something stupid. Anyone can do something that's just they just didn't realize something and make a mistake. Anyone can be wrong, but it's an entirely different thing to actually knowingly lie to people and manipulate. And so like, I take that much, much more serious and I need to not be so bothered by that because this is the internet and there's just some trolls out there. Right. So <laughs> yeah. What's that? They don't have a life. Yeah. They probably, they're probably just upset people getting online and it's taking pot shots and they stuff like that. Problems. So yeah, I mean, like, like I, I'm not an online YouTube person who went through any kind of training or anything. I'm just an engineer that thought making a YouTube channel would be fun. So I'm kind of learning at this too. And maybe part of it is I just need to get thicker skin. So I can accept that maybe that's my issue and that's where I'm at. And I'll just work on it, I guess. But right now it's just pissing me off. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I just don't want to like keep giving them stuff that makes them angry and makes them come yell yelling at me about like the Magic the Gathering finance stuff. That's what seems to get under their skin. And if it's funny because if I was terrible at it, if I gave you guys really bad recommendations for what cards are going up, everybody would just laugh at me and move on. But I think the reason that I've actually been making good financial calls is kind of what like set them off. Because then people started watching and then I would say, I think that card's going to go and it'd go pew. And then next thing you know, the trolls just descend on me, right? <laughs> They're waiting for you. Yeah, yeah, pretty um, much, right? Okay, Jonathan King is asking, are you going to Raspberry Pi any of the What Up machines? Oh, that's a really good question. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, um, so I'm, I'm real familiar with this topic, so I can talk about it. So Raspberry Pi 
it's like a small, what's called, there's microprocessors and microcontrollers. Microcontrollers have many of those, uh, how do you say it? The other pieces that a computer needs to live are built onto a microcontroller. <clears throat> a processor only has the main processing unit. It doesn't have its RAM and its ROM and its D to A, A to D, parallel port, serial port, all these other special things. A processor doesn't have any of that. Um, a microcontroller has all of that. So an Arduino board is like just a little, um, it's like a microcontroller with like a power circuit and a couple other interface things on it. So it's very small, very compact, very cheap. And you can use those for a ton of projects. And so a while ago, somebody actually made a little board that makers can use called the Raspberry Pi. And it's a little microcontroller. So it's a little self-contained, low power unit, has a lot of ability to do a lot of things. And they created this design kit. So people in the world that knew at least some basics on how to code and solder and stuff like that could actually go off and like build small electronics projects. And so the Raspberry Pi is what a lot of people will use to make like a video game ROM system because the Raspberry Pi has the ability to actually output video and then you can get them to run like Nintendo and Genesis and stuff like that emulators. And so that's what they were talking about. I figured I would explain that because not a lot of other people understand that. So. Um, what was the original question about the Pi? Um, when if you were gonna well, <clears throat> use the Raspberry Pi in one of the one -ups. Okay, so um, I thought for okay, here's the funny thing. For years, I wanted to build an arcade machine, run like a MAME32 emulator on it, add in all of my favorite ROMs and stuff, and set up some really cool joysticks. But what always held me back is for the same reason. Like I haven't ever tried to go big or professional with Magic because just I'm so busy. You know, between like career and family and all that, I can't even like travel to GPs and things like that, which is actually old, all you old school guys, that's why I don't show up because <laughs> I just don't have time. So anyways, I wanted to build these arcade cabinets, but it was just such a monumental effort to go cut the wood, lay it all out, write the code, mod the, the uh, Raspberry Pi. So I never got around to it. And what I got so excited about these arcade one-up boxes for, it was perfect for someone like me because I just don't have the time Here's a finished box. It already is there and it's already working and I can now take my time and upgrade pieces one at a time. So the answer is, yeah, I might actually at some point rip out the existing board, but you know, not destroy it. Keep it and like set it aside. Go get something like a Raspberry Pi or something else more powerful and set up like a really good emulator ROM box and just put a ton of games on it. So yeah, I might actually do that. And in fact, that other channel that I mentioned, Cool Toys, um, he's been talking about a lot of that same kind of stuff as well. And I found other videos also on the internet where guys did exactly that. They took like the Street Fighter box, ripped out the processor on it. They put in something else, modded the heck out of it. And what they came up with is amazing, actually. Do I have more, a lot of more questions? Okay, yeah. sorry. Sorry, I'm spending too much time. Um, also, I accidentally skipped this, but Joseph Pedersen said you still haven't told me which custom life counter you want either, by the way. I don't know if he's talking to you or somebody else. Oh, okay. So Joseph Pedersen. So good to see you, Joe. Um, he's the one I ran into at GP Vegas 20, it was 2018, uh -huh. when I was there with Dan and Rudy and all of them, and we crashed that VIP party. Oh. <laughs> he's the one. Uh, that, I got to tell this story really quickly because this is just so funny. So um, I was cruising around with the Vintage Magic team with Rudy and Dan and all of us, and there was a Wizards of the Coast VIP party, and we were not invited to it. But we knew, happened to hear where it was. And so we were like, no, don't tell the story yet. <laughs> okay, okay. No. Okay, so Rudy, Rudy's in there. Okay, oh, okay. I'll be quiet. <laughs> I'm glad that I saw your text here, Rudy, because I almost told that story. <laughs> Anyways, so that's where I met that Joseph Peterson. <laughs> and uh, that's where I met Joseph Peterson. And uh, he, uh, yeah, we're talking about life counters and such. So Joseph, um, I don't know what the options are. Uh, let me know what options are out there, and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let you know which one I'm going for. And by the way, Rudy, thank you for joining. And we've also got MTG Perp on the channel right now, Rudy. Oh, sorry, my catcher. <laughs> there is no Perp anymore. There's no more Magic Historian. My <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's lots of comments about what you're talking about with the trolls and stuff. And I like okay. how Mike said I was right. <laughs> Your wife is right. They are garbage <laughs> people. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, Timothy Vandenberg says you and your wife should do a video on how to keep a 
proper priority balance between family work and hobbies all while keeping your better half happy <laughs> um that that's a really good topic you know actually let me speak to that for just a sec there's was one really important thing i think your your kids and your wife have to know that they come first that's super important and i think there's just little moments in time where there's like something you're working on and then like they need you, your attention to work on something and when they see you take that thing that they know that you love and set it aside and be like, okay, how do you guys need me? They see that priority. Oh my gosh, that adds love to the relationship. That, that, those, those little moments, man, those are huge. <laughs> so, okay, anyways. Go on, but yeah. Yeah. She's like, go on. <laughs> that was funny. Um, hold on. I'm trying to get through the comments. Um, okay. Mike was joking. I, I took elite YouTube training courses. That's not even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It probably is. <laughs> well, there's probably something. Like, I feel like like Daniel Chang was like, Edwin, you need to make a channel. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Here we go. How about Edwin the Magic Engineer? You know, which is really funny. My whole family laughed at me like crazy when I told them that. They're like, oh, God, no one's going to like that. That is No, I didn't say that. I didn't say it like that. No, I didn't. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Um, so, okay, while she's scanning, <laughs> um, so Rudy, what else should I not talk about? Oh, I should not talk about that one time and the guy and the thing. <laughs> and remember, and there was the big plastic piece. And, like, remember where we put that? <laughs> they haven't found it yet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Time in Amsterdam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, Timothy also says your wife is always right. Thank you, Timothy. I agree. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, Timothy. <laughs> Making my life difficult tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's Robert Romaine said, women coming first? What are you doing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully there's a back and forth that happens here. Hopefully, like, the, you know, your wife sees that, like, oh, he puts me first, and so she allows you to have that thing back, right? It's if you keep giving it and then never get it to have that time back, then you know there's a problem. <laughs> oh, Rudy says, I bought your wife dinner one night. That is true. <laughs> Just kidding. He bought, he bought dinner that night? No, time? it was Daniel. Yeah, that was Daniel. Yeah. Daniel's buying my wife yeah. dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, Rudy, um, Dan keeps talking about like future plans of what's coming up. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and people are now constantly asking me like, hey, what are you guys doing? Can I take part in? And so like we need to tell that guy to stop. <laughs> to stop letting out all, the cat out of the bag on the future plans here. Rudy says, I don't know if he's talking about me, but he said I'm her backup guy. <laughs> <laughs> Your aunt would like to see your shirt. So could you see oh, it? Oh, okay. Life? Okay, so Aunt Carol, this is the shirt that Holly <laughs> made for me for Christmas. And it's got the ETME on the back. And she also made this awesome cup for me. It actually has ETME on it. And this was all made using the Cricut. So my aunt is a crafter person. She'll know what that well, actually she is. She's helped me. <laughs> she's helped me. And then Rudy, you probably missed all the other pieces like this really awesome like wood life counter that actually like has this gears that turn inside and there's a bunch of other cool stuff you know what you're just gonna have to like either show up on time or back the video up yeah. <laughs> gotta back it up <laughs> oh yeah do i ever get strangers asking me if etme stands for eat me that was you know it was, i the first time like i wrote it out that's how i read it i looked at it and i was like oh hmm, eat me and then it, there was like a moment i was like okay am i okay with that <laughs> Because people are definitely going to make that connection. Uh -huh. Am I okay with that? Uh -uh. I think I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm telling the whole world okay. to just eat me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Joseph, uh, there was a bunch of other things I went through as well. Like, you'll have to, like, go back and check him out. These cool life counters and stuff like that. Like, he can't get enough of Disney stuff, so he missed all that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> since we moved to Orlando, we go to Disney so much. We're going tomorrow, pretty much. Yeah. To, uh, to Epcot. Carol liked the shirt. Thanks, Aunt Carol. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're any, any of you are going to hunt us down at Epcot tomorrow morning, try to find me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I see some other plot thickens comments. Do we still have... Okay, I, my catcher is still in here, I think. 
Okay, oh, we still have Rudy that. inside there. <laughs> okay, any other questions coming up? Or should I move on to the next major topic? <laughs> major topic? <laughs> the next major topic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid now. <laughs> okay, so um, the next topic, uh, I put that video out saying, you know, showing what all my financial predictions have been over like the last like year or like couple years. And um, that's that was like a big thing that I wanted to kind of express because I feel that a lot of people, you know, they just throw a lot of information out there and they're, they don't hold themselves accountable. And I'm really trying actually to hold myself accountable, which constantly means like looking at what I'm doing and, and asking like, is this good? Is this valid? Am I helping people? Um, is this quality content? Um, I even do that in my actual videos where like, I know my videos like started bad quality and they've gotten better, but like I, if I can't think of a video that I think is worth people watching, like I just won't even make it right. And I'm trying to build a library of content that people can go back and like see for like a really long time. They can discover a couple of my videos and go back and look at the old ones and say, well, these are all pretty good and valid as well. I'm trying to kind of do that to kind of just add value constantly. Um, so I care about that quality quite a bit. So I thought it would be very important to go back and revisit all my financial predictions that I've been making. Cause I've been giving some of you guys like either like stock tips or like real estate tips or lots of magic, the gathering, like predictions and where cards were going to go up or down. And so I thought it'd be pretty valid to go back and say, okay, well, how have those gone over like some amount of time? This is our dog, Emma. We have two dogs. <clears throat> so, um, that's why I wanted to make that video. But I've been wanting to make that video for a while, but then when the whole, you know, all the trolls came in for all the magic card price predictions, that's when like, I just kind of changed like, you know, the direction I wanted to go with it. And I just decided I wasn't going to do those because, you know, again, like I don't get any benefit from this. I don't have a Patreon. This is just all for fun. And like when I put a price call out there, I can definitely say I was able to help people go in and get cards before they spiked up in price. And I'm very glad for that, right? Because there is a lot of investors out there. There is a lot of desire for cards. And so I'm very proud of the fact that I was able to help the players who were watching me move into those cards. But I started to wonder myself if I had a lot of like more investors rather than players that were actually watching my content because I kept on picking cards and they kept spiking shortly afterwards. And like if once that switches around and now it's like, it's not so much like the game just exists and prices are doing what they're doing. If I'm now, if people are watching me and it's like a like tail wag the dog kind of situation, I'm not really very comfortable with that because that's where like, you know, the possibility for manipulation or at least accusations comes in. And since I'm not getting paid for this, I'm not going to be everyone's scratching post for nothing. Right. I'm not just going to come on here and get beat up for it. Oh, so Rudy just logged out? I think so. Okay, yeah, so I back to you. adult content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, we have a couple questions. Okay. Roger's asking, random question, if you're in a scenario where you take a 35% hit on your trade-ins, total 638 USD to a game store for Ultimate Masters and Dominaria, would you do it? Wow, a 38% loss. And Ultimate Masters, you said, Dominaria, uh, hmm. You know, um, what I personally usually do in that situation is I pick the bigger cards and I sell them myself to people in person if I can, because the you're, you'll get market value of the card, excuse me, and you're not giving up all the fees to PayPal and eBay and stuff like that. And there's also, um, there's some Facebook groups where people trade cards and like they get to have like a feedback system and so it can end up being decently safe. So I try to get closer to full value for the big cards. Then for the smaller cards, if I could just like trade in like a lot of like the smaller stuff and get decent value, like 35% of full value for like, you know, 50 cent cards, $1 cards, $3 cards. Yeah, I'd do that because it's just not worth like selling those. Um, a best case scenario is finding other people to trade with and maybe trading those cards into other cards and trying to trade your way up. But you know, it's a, that's a problem these days because almost nobody trades anymore. Everybody just buys and sells because we all play different formats and nobody wants each other's cards, right? Timothy 
um, Vandenberg is asking, I think he actually left now, but have you tried getting into Alpha 40 for funsies? Not a competitive deck like Daniel's, just a fun alpha only deck. So yeah, I, I've been asked this question probably 30 times. Um, no, I, I'm avoiding Alpha 40. And the reason why I'm avoiding it is because like, um, it's a, a format with a lot of potential for abuse. I mean, somebody with a deck like Daniel's just comes in and destroys everything. And I don't mind losing. I'm totally okay with joining a tournament and then just getting dead last. That's fine if I'm having fun, right? But the problem is with some of these builds, if you do like all lightning bolts, wheel of fortunes and black lotuses or something, then you'll just die on turn one. And if somebody puts together a deck like that, I effectively don't get to play. And so I don't really like that. I don't like the abuse that it actually has at the high end potential. The other thing though, is that alpha is really expensive, man. Those cards are crazy expensive. And if I have a bunch of money that I can put into magic, and this is like, I just experienced this. Cause actually I just bought three Mishra's workshops and I was gonna post those on Instagram when they arrived. So um, those are expensive cards, right? Now I only had one previously that I'd bought with crypto money. And now I've just bought three more. So when all four of those arrive, well now I'm enabled to go play like stacks decks and vintage and stuff, right? So for me, since I want to play, that's like my number one priority. That's why I don't buy graded cards and all that stuff. I don't buy like a lot of like, you know, sealed stuff that's all investment purpose. Uh, even though I fully understand that you can get the most value out of those. What I'm purposely going for is I want to have play value. So I want to enable myself to build old school decks and vintage decks and legacy decks. And once I flesh all those out and I can build all those decks, well, that's where I look at it and say like, okay, fine. I'm, I'm willing to, you know, sell my $5 Birds of Paradise from Revised and go get a $1,000 Alpha Birds from Paradise, Birds of Paradise, and, you know, put my money in like that, right? So, th but that's like, that's so far down the road, right? Because there's so many cards I still need to buy before I'm really, I'm just fleshed out on all those formats that I want to play. So for me personally, Alpha 40 is way down the stack. It's an interesting concept. I don't begrudge anyone that plays it. Um, I see why people like it, but me personally, I'd rather go for breadth of decks first before I just went for insane value in this one weird warped format. Um, Timothy also is asking, is there a specific card yet that people keep asking you to sign? Um, I haven't, you know, surprisingly, I haven't had a lot of signature requests lately. I had a bunch of those like at and before Vegas. I haven't since, um, <clears throat> but people did seem to like the engineer card that I had. Like, what was that guy's name? You know, the, the one little blue engineer guy, because, uh, I don't know. They just guess they thought that fit also. Blue engineer guy? <clears throat> yeah. The cards that I signed and I like, gave out for free at GP Vegas. Oh. I'll have to go like, look what that one was. Uh, I forget the name of that one. But anyways, like if I do get requests, it's usually like to sign that card. But what I've also done is uh, when I've either like sent cards to people just, you know, for fun or like when I sold that the beta chaos sword so I could buy all those arcade boxes, I got a lot of uh, foreign black border, original art, revised lands, and I like signed those and gave them to the guy as well. So I, I do those definitely. Um, people are talking about trading a little bit here. Good. Uh, Everyone start trading, please. Trading is <laughs> awesome. I miss James it. James says, what trading? Who trades? The, J the deck builder says, I trade. I was able to get a fetch land yesterday. Uh, so oh, hey, question for you guys. Do you guys think WotC is going to reprint fetch lands in one of the next master sets, whatever they call it? You know, cause yeah. I'm sure they're going to do a master set again. But whatever they're going to call it, I don't know. Right? There's nothing that will make... Nothing makes me believe they're done printing... Uh, old, you know, uh, modern cards and legacy cards that are not on the reserve list. I think they're totally going to do those. Shane or Shan says yes. <laughs> yeah, so we got one yes. Huh. Who else thinks that they're going to reprint fetch lands in like one of the next master sets or whatever they're going to call it? <laughs> what? I have no idea. About what? What, what <laughs> fetches? Right. That too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the fetch lands. What There's do you a think? dog involved. <laughs> yeah. There's a dog that plays fetch. <laughs> I don't know. He's a polluted Delta dog. Yeah, there we go. Delta dog. <laughs> Disney Pluto. 
<laughs> Mike, can you actually get Carly to play magic? And if you do, tell me how. <laughs> I want to get her to play magic. <laughs> Oh, I see Timothy's got a question here about Her computer. to share for girls like hers. I forgot that word. Hmm, computer engineering. Um, what normally gets people into programming and engineering of some sort is something that involves a passion. That's what I've noticed. Mm -hmm. um, there are people that went into engineering because they knew that you could make a good income for it, from it. And most of the time, those people scrubbed out in college because those weed out classes are just really hard. So if you want, if any of you have a kid and you want that kid to get super involved in anything like tech or science, I'd say you got to find something that's really exciting to them. You got to find something that they get passionate about. I started with Legos when I was a little kid. That's why there's that Lego Voltron up there, right? <laughs> you just, just waiting to like... Plug that in. Or yeah, not. yeah. The Lego Voltron. I'm <laughs> waiting to plug that. I think it's really cool. So, Notice the blue Voltron part? She built the blue lion. It's, <laughs> I know. It's the best part. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely um, Legos when I was a little kid. And then I got into radio control cars. Like, you know, the Timia cars. And then the Team Associated RC10. And <clears throat> all the Kyosho cars. And I was building them. And I was winding my own motors. And cutting out my own graphite chassis by the time I was like 13. And... So the, by the time I enrolled in college, I mean, I already knew how to like, like solder up batteries and electronic speed controllers and build cars and work on them. Like I knew all that stuff, right? So it brought the passion out and that got me excited about the major. So the best advice I can possibly give is you've got to find an outlet that gets the kid passionate about, you know, what that kind of tech science thing might be. And on that note, there's way more jobs in programming, by the way. It was not the case when I was a little kid. There was a lot of hardware jobs, but there's not as many hardware jobs anymore. It's mostly programming. So try to focus on that if you can. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's you in a nutshell. Yeah, me. His me in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, I'm going go, to go plug the Voltron. You guys are going to see this. <laughs> This is so cool. And do your cool. little thing. Your what? little transformer noise. Oh, she every, wants me to make the... Every boy is bored with I'll it. make a transformer sound if you make a transformer sound <laughs> oh, first. You guys have got to hear this. It is so funny. <laughs> Come on. I can't do it on the spot. Okay. Okay. So this thing, when I first... <laughs> Wait. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll do my transformer sound. I said I would. Oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> that's, you know, when they're like collapsing into a car or something. I'm not doing it again. Oh, come on, I did mine twice. I have to, I can't just do it on the spot. I have uh, okay, to okay, I'll, I'll show them Voltron here. So, okay, this Lego kid, yeah, he's actually wearing the Mox Ruby. That's what's really funny. So, um, when I first saw this, I was like, I don't even think this is like an actual Lego kit because it had all these smooth parts. When you turn it over to the back, you can clearly see all the actual Lego parts. This thing actually like changes into like the five lions and stuff like that. Yeah, they actually come off and turn into actual lions. It's just, it is the coolest thing. <laughs> I tried to build this so many times when I was a kid, but I was not even close to succeeding. And then some guy, I guess he like, he submitted this and like won a contest and they agreed to build it. And then he did this Lego kit. And it's like 2,300 pieces. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> it is the coolest thing. And there we go. Let's put that sucker back. And he's, uh, he's just kicking it back there. Chilling. He's chilling like a villain. <laughs> the Lego Voltron. I have to tend to the child. I'll be right back. Okay. So no one had any other questions about the finance stuff? I thought that would get people's blood flowing <laughs> and talking about stuff. Oh, Tavis King just joined in. He said, hi, Holly. Hello. Rock Lords. Oh, my gosh. I remember Power Lords. Like, there was Adam Power, and they did, like, he would, like, he'd turn all blue up top, and he had, like, a little gem in his head. And Tavis said, please tell Edwin hello. Hello, hi. Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Edwin. <laughs> Tavis, you got to come back Sir out Edwin. here, man. We got Sir Edwin. He's we got to play some games, man. We gotta, I'm itching to play some games. And so Timothy said, so you let your toys wear Mox jewelry and not your own wife? I know, right? I keep offering for her to wear a Mox, and she doesn't, she doesn't want to wear it most of the time. Yeah. 
Oh, and Shan said, I want to thank you for the advice on the Chaos Orb. Uh, you are welcome. I'm glad that that stuff worked out for you guys. Who oh, knows? Shan gave me advice, too, what a fetch land is. Oh, he did? Right there. Right there. Right and his here? his wife fetches a lag. Yeah. Yeah, he did. There you see. I'll bank that away. Yep. <laughs> you can use a fetch land to go fetch any basic land, or any of the two basic lands that they specifically target. So anyways, uh, yeah, um, I might come back to doing like financial predictions at some point, but you know, here, here's the break point, guys. I'm doing this all for fun. It's, I, I can't be doing all this, giving up all my free time and just be pissed off all the time. So I've got to find that balance. I've got to find that place where I can actually do this and enjoy it and keep the trolls at bay. I've got to figure out a way to like make those two worlds, you know, work together somehow. So that's what it kind of comes down to. And so... If something changes, there's a paradigm shift and I'm not going to just get flamed or maybe I just get better at resisting it and I just don't care anymore, like Perp is telling me I should do, then I don't know, maybe I'll start doing it again. We'll Let's just see. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> I need to toughen up. I need to man up. You need to man up. I need to grow a pair. That's what Rudy would tell me to do. <laughs> Edwin, you need to grow a pair. Mike would probably say that too. <laughs> I'm sure he'd add some things to that too. <laughs> I haven't seen him say anything in a while. Is he still on the line? I don't know. Oh, he, Timothy said he likes that we have fun together. Do we have fun together? Yeah. Okay. She said, yeah. yeah. She said it quickly, too. She didn't delay. She didn't say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's close>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. so so the uh, the Serendip Efri being the next mm -hmm. hot buy. Okay, so that video that Daniel posted, that was back at GP Vegas. And so... Man, those guys, Dan and Rudy, man, they would run around buying all these Arabian Nights cards. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Maybe he's, this is going to be another time Rudy's like, Edwin, shh, He's not here. <laughs> don't say anything I about he that. Left. <laughs> but I would just not. <laughs> but yeah, well, Dan kind of let the cat out of the bag because he was like, you know, Serenity Befreets and buying Arabian Nights sets. Like, yeah, we would go to like a GP and like we went to the Orlando GP and we walk in. And then, like, Rudy and I walked over to this one counter, and we found, like, all these, like, Serendibs and all this cool stuff. And, like, I was showing Rudy, like, all these cards, and he left for just a second to go get something. And Daniel ran over and, like, bought them all. <laughs> and we were all just like, come on, Dan. <laughs> okay, yeah, Mike said I'm still here, oh, my man. Oh, Tavis is working on his YouTube channel. Cool. You, Yay! Tavis, go, man. You go. <laughs> I'd love to see that. And uh, if I can help you in any way, let me know. It'd, it'd be really cool to see that going. And I know you got that desk all cleaned off, so I want to see some videos, man. Um, so Timothy said we're going to Disney World tomorrow. No, um, so we're going to Disney World tomorrow. He said I'm taking my wife to Disneyland. Oh, New Year's Day. Cool. <laughs> Magic family nerds. <laughs> yeah, we think alike. Yeah, I think we're planning on... That's my nerd thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think... do too much Disney probably. Well, we really enjoy it. Yeah. So, I don't think there's any such thing as too much Disney. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to find out. <laughs> like five years. I don't get tired of it ever. We're going to go to Epcot tomorrow uh, because we just we love the Magic Kingdom, but we've been there it's a couple crazy times. There right now. Yeah, it's crazy. And <laughs> we think, actually. I think Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, the line to get in was two miles long. Like, the just to get in the gate yeah. of your car. Yeah, I've got a yeah, friend who works there. He might be on this this live stream. Zizi, I think, is Tyler. I but I, no yeah, I think he might be on this live stream. But he was telling us it's like eighty seven thousand people or something were like in the Magic Kingdom. They were like they hit capacity and had to stop letting people in. And honestly, I just don't think I would enjoy the park with that many people. And we've got passes where we can go most times, so we're we're just gonna go another time when it's not crazy like that. Oh, Vara's streaming too. Cool. Yeah, no, don't worry about it, Carl. If you got to take off, just go and say hi to her for me. Uh, uh, she used to join my live streams also. But now now we're competing for like the 9 o'clock time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, those are the big topics that I wanted to go over. I don't know. We've been going for 15 minutes. Maybe this is a good point to stop it, you think? Maybe. Yeah. So if you guys have any last questions to throw in there, uh, get, your, get those questions in and then... Uh, Otherwise, we'll end it here in a couple more minutes. But I hope everybody liked the actual setup, how I could actually like flip over to uh, the other screen and show people. I'll show that again for those who didn't get to see it before. How I can actually like show um, the other screen and 
not just have to stick on the, like the one main display. I think that's a nice little feature. <clears throat> Being able to using OBS Studio instead of just the straight up YouTube Hi, streaming. Mike. Mike, okay, thanks Mike for showing up. I appreciate you coming and uh, I'll be there in one of your next streams, Bo. Okay. Oh, Vara said hi back. Huh, cool. Hi back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Happy New Year, Shan. Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, Voltron, yeah. Oh my gosh, Voltron is so cool, Tavis. You gotta come here and see it. But at you some know point. what's even cooler is the castle, the yeah. Lego castle. Are you gonna talk about that? I just did. <laughs> she bought the Lego castle, and okay. we're building it right now. That mm -hmm. big Disney one that's like, you want to oh, live in it. Your aunt Carol's still here. Carol, I'll have to show you something. She didn't get to see this. I made this. Oops, where am I? <laughs> it's right here. Where am I? The Starbucks yeah. cup. And then she, uh, see, it's not focusing super well. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Sorry, that's my Disney. Uh, it's not coming in. Okay, so anyways, it was the uh, the Tinkerbell. She had cut that out on the Cricut and put that on her Starbucks cup. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Just like she did for my shirt and everything. Have I ever thought of putting Ubelette into a budget old school black deck? Yes, I've definitely thought about that. I've looked at that card several times, and the thing is that, you know, black just has so much good removal, like, already, that, like, I think every time I look at it, I just keep coming back to the point that it's like, you know, I just, there's so many other black or, like, colorless removals I'd rather use beforehand is what I keep going to. Um... Chains of Mephistopheles is something I've been thinking about an awful lot lately. I'm a good way to actually break that card. That's definitely something that's been rattling around in my head. I've been contemplating it myself. <clears throat> so Timothy <laughs> says, have you tried isitcrowded.com to plan your next Disney World visit? Is that the one we used when we lived in Texas still? Is it crowded? No, we used mouse something, but... We kind of just go now. We yeah. Just, we actually drop our kid off at school when she's at school. Yeah. And just go. <laughs> yes. Like when Eddie has like a Friday off or I've only got a couple times by myself, but. Yeah. So I work this. It's the coolest thing. The, the new job I've got down here in Orlando, we work what's called a 980 where I work 40 hours one week, five days. And then the next week I only work four days and I still need to have 40 hours and I can carry some over from the previous week. But between those two weeks, you got to work 80 hours out of those nine days. So they call it a 980. But the difference is you get Friday off every other Friday. And that's been amazing for getting errands done. And then also just for like Disney World date days. So that's what we do. Like, you know, we drop the kid off at school and we go to the park. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't mind actually. <laughs> yeah. That is the plan. Okay. So we haven't had a lot of new questions come in. This is probably a good spot to end it. So Thank you everyone for showing up. This has been a fun live stream. I appreciate all of you for showing up. And uh, just, yeah, keep giving the feedback on the channel and let me know what kind of stuff you want to see. And uh, yeah, you guys have a great 2019. Happy New Year. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.